One of the greatest gifts we can give ourselves is being true to who we are. One of our sweet viewers left a comment saying, don't let your ice cream melt while you're counting other people's sprinkles. And that is so true. We need to find what brings us the most joy on our frugal journey. How we can manage this journey with a positive attitude. Find the niche that really makes us smile. Another wise viewer shared that she works on one goal a day. And if she gets that goal done, then she has been productive. Whether it may be to tackle a draw and declutter it, go through paperwork and shred it, meal plan. Your frugal journey is going to be your unique journey. And as we go on with this journey, we find what brings us the most joy and contentment. We find what really works for us. Our wish for you today is that you find that special joy and that you live the absolute best life that you can. Welcome, sweet friends, to the channel Frugal Money Saver. My name is Emmy. My husband is Paul. We're so happy you have joined us today. Today's video, we're just going to continue on encouraging you to live below your means, to find joy in the simple everyday pleasures while you're saving money, while you're reaching your goal and having the best life that you can. We're going to be showing an amazing DIY that Paul did. This is going to become like an heirloom treasure to me, honestly. We're going to share a cozy one pot meal. We're going to show you a viewer tip that radically changed our lives. So we want you to sit back, relax, and we hope this video encourages you and motivates you just to get some ideas of how you too can live the life that you truly want to live while spending less money. So let's get right to Paul's DIY. This DIY was based around an item I found in Hobby Lobby. I fell in love with it. And I said to Paul, we need to put this in the little house in South Carolina. It needs to go in the kitchen on the one blank wall we have. And I'm going to show you why we thought that. We'll show you some pictures of the kitchen at the little house. We'll show you how Paul put this DIY together. So let's turn the camera around and hand it over to Paul. This is the gorgeous metal piece that we found in Hobby Lobby for 90% off. It is big. It is beautiful. This retailed for $51.99. I wouldn't even pay close to that. But at 90% off, it was like $5. What a win. I just wanted to show you why I thought this piece would be so perfect in Carolina. Look at our kitchen set. It is wrought iron. It is yellow. It is black. Our stove is black, so I figured on the wall this would be absolutely stunning. The kitchen set is wrought iron. This is a very old vintage set. I love it. I love it. I love it. It's got the glass tabletop, as you can see. And what we did was we just brightened it up with some yellow cushions and the yellow and gray tablecloth. We're showing you this just to get a vision of what we were thinking and how good it would go in this room. So Emmy showed you the metal wall art that we got at Hobby Lobby the other day on sale. And we needed some sort of a background for it to mount to so we can hang it in the little house in the kitchen. So we thought of a canvas. Now an unpainted brand new canvas goes for quite a bit of money. So we went to Goodwill and we found this piece of artwork which is on a frame a beautiful frame actually
And look what we paid. $7.99 for this piece of canvas stretched on this wooden frame. Uh, it's so cheap, it's unbelievable. And this thing is two feet by three feet. This will fit our, our metal artwork beautifully. So now what I'm doing is I'm just using some paint that I had left over from the walls when I painted the house. I always keep the extra paint around in case you have to do a touch up. And I'm gonna paint this canvas over, maybe two or three coats, and make it this plain color. And then this way, the metal artwork will stand out. I'm gonna mount it to this frame. It's gonna look beautiful. So I finished painting the canvas. It's a paint that we use down south at the little house. So it's like an off-white. It's got a little bit of yellow to it. I don't think you can see it in the film, but I also painted the sides of the canvas. So now on to the next step. Since these metal flowers have to be mounted to the back of this canvas, I have to add some braces in the back so I have something to anchor this to. Now this doesn't weigh a lot. If I hang this just on the canvas alone, it's going to bow out and it's just not going to look good. So I'm going to try to make a little bracket. But the problem is this center brace doesn't get close enough to the canvas. My hand can come right up inside here. So what I have to do is make two more braces. From the top down, I'm going to measure 11 inches and make a mark. I'm going to do the same on the other side. And on the bottom up, I'm going to make a mark at 12 inches. Now I'm carefully going to drill a pilot hole for the screw to go through the frame so I can mount the board. Okay, so here it is. After I finish screwing in the two boards, there's the one, there's the two. I can now mount my metal flowers to the front of this and it'll have some support. Now look, I am not a carpenter or a cabinet maker, so I'm sure there's a million ways you can do this. This is what I thought. Hopefully this is gonna come out great. Now that I put the wood frames in the back of this uh, canvas, I marked two small holes that I'm going to drill through the canvas and through the wood so I can use wire to tie the sculpture to this canvas. So I used some stiff wire that I had in the garage and of course it's silver. So after I tied it to the artwork, I used a black Sharpie marker just to touch up a little bit of the wire. Well, here it is. This is the back as we saw before. And this is how I tied the wire when I drilled. I tied the wire through the holes and twisted it, drilled the wire through the board and twisted it. So I stitched it with wire. So that's the back. And here's the finished product. Came out great. I think it looks beautiful, especially no frame. It'll look great on the wall at the little house in Carolina. As you can see, the bottom wire you can't see. It was hidden with that string that came on it. And then basically up here, I just used a Sharpie to hide where I mounted it. So there it is. Little piece of artwork, little bit of time, little bit of fun, very frugal. Paul wouldn't let me see it till it was finished. And he, I was down here and he was upstairs and he texted me. He's like, come upstairs, I want you to see this. Oh my goodness, I did not think it would turn out as well as it did. He went above and beyond. But what we're really trying to encourage you with when we show you things like this is how just thinking outside the box can turn a ordinary item into something so beautiful and magnificent. When you look at something or you find something in a thrift store or at a garage sale, look at it. If it strikes beauty in your heart, think about how you can utilize it and bring it into your own life. And that's what we did with that little $5 piece of Hobby Lobby ironwork and that really, <laughs> Uh, unattractive canvas. I hate to say it, but the picture that was on that canvas, when Paul showed it to me, I was like, are you kidding? He's like, just trust me, just trust me. And he was so right. So for 13 or $14, we have something that looks high end, really beautiful and matches our decor at the little house perfectly. So thank you again, my dear. He really went above and beyond on this one. Now we want to share a really great viewer inspired hack. This changed our lives when I tell you. 
You all leave the best comments and we learn so much from you. This one I had no idea about. The viewer just mentioned it. Then I Googled it, saw how to do it, and I was like, oh my goodness. If you know this hack already, then you know how amazing it works. But if you don't, this could be revolutionary. Here you go. In our last video, Paul showed how he put a shelf under my kitchen sink to hold my soaps and my sponges and everything. And we also showed all our plastic bags. Now here in New York, plastic bags, except for produce, are not given out anymore. You cannot get them for shopping bags. So anytime we get plastic bags, we save them and we use them for garbage bags or maybe for raw chicken and things like that that need to be disposed of that we don't want to put in our regular garbage. So somebody had seen our creative way of stuffing them all in the bag. And one of our sweet viewers said, have you ever thought of folding your bags in the triangle method? It would save so much time and room. So right away I looked it up and now I'm gonna show you this hack. I think this is a good one. Here we have your regular plastic shopping bag with handles. And all we have to do is fold it in half, get the air out. We're gonna fold it in half again, get the air out, and then it's as simple as this. Triangle up, just like that. Then we're gonna fold it onto this side, this way. This way. See where I'm going? Look at this. <laughs> When I saw this, after the viewer had told me, and I looked at this, I was like, are you kidding me? When you get to the top, you have these two handles. So all you're going to want to do is just open this up and tuck it in. Look at this. Come on. Look at this compared to this. <laughs> quite a difference. And you can even do them with the plain produce bags. Just fold it in half, fold it in half. And these are gonna make even a little bit tinier triangle. But my goodness, this revolutionized my life. And if you do this when you get home, zero, zero effort. Tuck those ends in. There you go. Yeah, how many years did it take me <laughs> to figure that one out, okay? When I showed it to Paul, he's like, wow, that's amazing. So what a great hack. Do it as soon as you come home from shopping. Take those bags, fold them into that triangle. Not only will you save space, but even aesthetically, when you look and see your plastic bags and they're all in these great little triangles, you just feel better. You feel lighter. I don't know. But thank you so much to the viewer who sent that tip in. The weather is getting cooler here in the Northeast. It was in the 50s again last night. So we're turning our minds toward one pot comfort meals. Again, using what we have, you're always telling us use your Instapot. And I'm like, eh, well, Instapot for the win on this meal. This came out so delicious. It was a hug in a bowl, if that makes sense. So good. We're gonna get into the kitchen now and we're gonna show you this easy, easy recipe. I'm also going to include a crock pot link for the same recipe, only using your crock pot if you don't have an Instapot. But if you have an Instapot, try this one. Let's get into the kitchen. We are going to create a creamy one pot chicken and rice dish. We're gonna be using our Instapot today. So many of you have encouraged us to do so. We have it, use it. And I think this is gonna make easy work of this recipe. This is almost going to have a risotto tendency. It's gonna be this creamy, delicious rice with cheese and chicken, should be amazing. The original recipe will be linked down below. 
and I have altered it just a little bit. So we've got about 12 ounces of a chicken breast that I just cut into bite-sized pieces. We've got three and a half cups of chicken broth, a cup of Parmesan cheese. It settled a little bit, but it was a cup before. I've got a cup and a half of white rice and I did rinse it. This rice is uncooked. About four tablespoons of butter or so. Half onion that I just chopped. Two cloves of garlic and a splash of fresh lemon juice. That's all it is and we're gonna do this right in the Instapot. So let's get to work. I put the Instapot on the saute function and I put our butter inside to melt. So our butter is pretty much melted. I'm gonna add our chopped onion. We're going to cook the onion for about four to five minutes just to get it soft and translucent. So we let this saute about mm, four minutes. Now I'm gonna add two cloves of minced garlic. Turn that for a second, just to get it fragrant. Now I'm going to add our cubed chicken breast. And we're just going to saute this for about five minutes. Wow, that smells fantastic. <laughs> Doesn't it smell good? Oh my goodness. All right, now we're going to add our rice. And that's one and a half cups. We're going to add our chicken stock, and this is low sodium stock, which is perfect. Here we go, nice and quiet now. We're gonna give this a good mix. And now we're also gonna add about a tablespoon and a half of fresh lemon juice. I hope this tastes as good as it smells. We're going to cancel the saute and we're gonna lock our Instapot. Make sure that steam valve is closed. And we're gonna set it on pressure cook for eight minutes. After it's done with its eight minutes of pressure cooking, we're going to natural release it for only two minutes. They say this is a very important part. Don't natural release it for more than two minutes. And then we'll quick release. The eight minutes are up. It just beeped and we put the timer on for exactly two minutes. We're going to just let it natural release for two minutes, and then we'll do a quick release. Two minute natural release is up, and Paul is going to quick release it. I hate this part. Be careful, Paul. Always use caution when you are doing a quick release. You just saw that the little metal pin dropped, so now it's safe to open but I always open it slow anyway. That's hot. Now I'm gonna give it a stir. Oh, this is so creamy. I'm gonna add the Parmesan cheese, which is going to make it so rich and decadent. Now, like I said, this is going to be like a risotto, very creamy. I'm gonna give it a taste, and then I'm gonna see if we need some salt and pepper. I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. It did not need salt. Now, you may not think this is much to look at. This is comfort food at its finest. You could even saute some vegetables and add it, but we made a big green salad. I'm gonna have Paul do a taste test on this. Let's see what he thinks. I just added some fresh basil for a pop of color and a little bit of taste. We've got a delicious garden salad to go with this. This is comfort food at its best. How simple. So let's see what Paul thinks. So here it is, Instapot chicken and rice, also known as pho risotto. This is gonna be great. I know it because it smells fantastic here. Got a little chicken, got a little risotto. Yep, that's it. This is delicious. Wow. You know what's amazing? It only took, I mean, oh. it cooked quicker than it took to prepare the chicken and the, uh, and the rice. Everything was just in one pot. This is 
Definitely a frugal win. All approved. If you let the rice and chicken just sit for a few minutes, you can see how thick and beautiful this got. It was silky. I am not kidding when I tell you this is one of my favorite dishes that I have made in a while. Very, very good. That was totally Paul and Emmy approved. As I was eating it, I was like, wow, this is so deceiving. Because you look at the simple bowl of rice and chicken and creaminess and you think, well, oh no, no, it is so deceiving. Delicious, yummy, comforting, warm, filling meal. Honestly, top of our list. That one will go in rotation. Give it a try. Today's question of the day. What have you repurposed lately? What DIY have you done? It could be anything. It could be as simple as transferring recipes to your recipe box like I'm working on. It could be repurposing an item. It could be anything that you have that you have turned into something else or that you have DIY'd recently. Please share that down below. We would love to know what you're doing because honestly, you encourage us as you all know and I know you encourage each other as well. So we thank you for sharing this time with us. It means so much. And for those of you who showed us so much love at the passing of our baby Loris, our little kitty. We thank you. The love and the support that you all poured out over on Instagram was just amazing and we appreciate it so much. We miss him dearly. It took many days for us even to get it together after he passed and he passed suddenly. He had um, basically a stroke. We were right there when it happened and he just fell over and we rushed him right to the emergency room, but they said there was nothing they could do for him. But he lived with us almost 12 years, so we are very, very thankful for the life he shared with us. So again, thank you all for your comfort during that time. So we appreciate it so much. And if you are not following us on Instagram, and I know I get a lot of questions about do we have a P.O. box, and yes, we do. That information is always linked right below in the description box. We hope you enjoyed this video. We ask, please, that you give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't come on in and be part of our frugal family. We're so close to 55,000 and you know what that means, another giveaway. We ask you to be well, we ask you to be safe, and above all, we wish you blessings. Until our next video, may God greatly bless you.